Xin chào, what's up everybody? All right, so this is, we kind of did like a fat and broke channel update, but this is more like a personal life update and, and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, <clears throat> kind of a news update. Um, it's gonna be a bunch of different things. It's gonna be uh, housing prices. <laughs> it's a, it's a conjovel of, I'm sure I didn't say that word any kind of right. I'm sure one of you will comment on it, but it's gonna be a lot of things into one video. The first thing I wanna talk about is the rising of rent in Saigon is getting insane. Um, it's going up at an exponential rate, especially in desirable areas like District 1, District 2, District 7. Um, it's going through the roof and it's going up there quickly. It's going up at such a fast rate. Uh, you wouldn't expect it, excuse me. Oh, I mean, a Golden River, for example, um, my lease isn't up for like another eight months. And my lady texted me the other day. She's like, I'm going to raise the rent. You're on COVID rent. And <clears throat> I've been talking with her every day. I'm like, <clears throat> I'm not on COVID rent. You had a good unit, but you had an empty unit that wasn't, doesn't have any furniture in it. So it's an empty unit. And I gave you a gigantic deposit, which I did. And then I pay you two months at a time, which was unheard of at the time that I did this. So I'm like, mm, it's not really a COVID uh, price. I gave you a phenomenal deal. You took the deal. And w what my essential answer is gonna be is, okay, we'll pay a little bit more, but we keep this deal going because it's pretty much a phenomenal deal for both of us. Like you're getting a bunch of money. So it, if I do leave, because I leave an apartment in perfect condition, I leave it better or same condition as when I rented it, you're going to have to give me back my gigantic deposit for one. Two, you're going to have to sit on an empty apartment for at least three months. So even if you made 30% more rent in those after three months of having it on the market and then renting it, you're still going to be at ground zero at the same price after a year or two of rent. So it logistically and sensibility makes really no sense to do what you're kind of saying you're wanting to do. So your best bet would be, well, we'll go up a little bit. You know, I'm thinking like, okay, we'll pay a million more a month. That's okay. But if she's trying to go for like two to 4 million more a month, that's insane. It's, it's just not worth it. It's not, you know, a one bedroom, non-furnished apartment in Golden River goes for 11 million to 15 million. There is nothing even the high floors that's over 15 million that is non-furnished one bedroom in Golden River. And she's probably got like the agent saying something in her ear that yada, 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 yada. We'll do this. We'll, we can rent it out. Because you have to understand the way that renting an apartment in Saigon goes is the agent that's showing you the apartment gets one month's rent when she shows it. And the, the company takes no part of that. She gets an entire one month to herself. It's all a commission-based business. So that's why an agent would potentially get into a landlord's ear after a lease is up to try and then get another, you know, one month's rent for re-renting the apartment to somebody new. It's a system that works, but it's a system that's broken at the same time. So it it is what it is, but this is what I'm gonna explain to that lady. And I have no problem walking away from that apartment. I absolutely love that apartment, but I'm not going to pay, you know, 18, 19 million to, for an empty one bedroom unit in Golden River. It's, it, it's, it's just not worth it. You would have to have, you know, you've got to buy a TV. You've got to buy a couch. You've got to buy a coffee table. You've got to buy a bed, a bed frame, a washer and dryer. I mean, you have to buy so much stuff to make that apartment work. And most people already have have that stuff don't have that stuff most people that are renting those type of apartments are actually renting a fully furnished apartment so the way it makes sense is not really at all you know most people are renting fully furnished fully serviced apartments so that is not a product that she has and to make it that kind of product she would have to then invest like five thousand more dollars into it again not catching up to having me leave and re-rent it out for months on the market, it, it wouldn't add up financially. So I know we still have quite a bit of leverage. I will let you know how that turns out because I do like that apartment, but I'm not gonna let somebody that is getting a little bit of greedy 
in these times right now get there because the problem with Vietnam right now is you don't have a long-term visa. There's a one month, 30 day, you know, and you've got to leave the country, get another e-visa and come back in. So it, she's, she's listening to what listing agents are telling her and not realistically looking at it. Like rent is going up, but it's not getting taken. It, it, there's no one here to take it. It's still only people that already have a TRC and that already live in Vietnam. It's next to impossible to get a actual long-term stay in Vietnam the legit way. They have not introduced any kind of long-term visa again. They're not giving away their one-year tourist visa again to Americans. They're not giving away a six-month visa to Americans. They're not giving away a 90-day visa to Americans. So it logistically doesn't make any sense why they're trying to raise the rents already. But they are because they're trying to, to negate their COVID loss, which... As a person that owns a property, which I did, I had quite a few properties in America, that is part of being the risk of a landowner and a renter. You are taking on that risk and knowing. It doesn't work that way to where you just go, oh, it's time to flip the switch. I want to make my COVID money back. That is the, the, the risk you take when you buy a property for rent. That is how it goes. You, you don't just suddenly go one day, oh, I, I want to make some money back from my, my shitty investment, essentially. Because that, that's the way. You know, you see so many things on the internet. Like, oh, buy apartments, buy apartments. I, I don't even know what that guy's name is. The guy from the, the fucking uh, hidden billionaire show on Discovery that's total bullshit. I forget his name, but he's like, buy properties, buy properties, rent them. Buy properties, buy properties, buy rent. None of them tell you the truth about that stuff. Sure, a lot of it works out. But there are some times where it doesn't work out in any kind of way. Maybe uh, a, an apartment building you bought, the sprinklers go bad and every unit gets flooded. And then you, <laughs> you have to gut the whole thing. And then you're at a loss for 10 or 15 years. It's not all fun and games being a landlord. And it's crazy that the internet makes you feel otherwise. Like, I also did an experiment here while I was here. I, I, I don't use social media. I never really have. Um, I have an Instagram account, but I don't sit there and peruse Instagram. I have YouTube, and I don't sit there and peruse YouTube either. The only things I ever really watched on YouTube were uh, comedy podcasts. Um, you know, Your Mom's House, uh, Tiger Belly, uh, Bad Friends, uh, occasionally Two Bears, One Cave. I'm not a particularly huge fan of Burt Kreischer, Burt Burnt Crisper, Brett Chrysler. Um, but... I never have really been a guy that uses social media more than an hour a day or a half hour a day. It was mainly a work-driven thing. But I did an experiment here. I, I downloaded Snapchat. I, I invested time in Instagram every day. I invested time in the stories on YouTube, which essentially is, is uh, recycled TikTok content uh, on YouTube is stories. No one really makes original stories. They take their TikTok shit they put it on the stories on YouTube. And it's been nothing but toxic. It's toxic for the brain. It's toxic for the mind. It's, it's a bunch of people saying you can do this. It's a guy taking $50,000 and giving it to a family and say, oh, I just wanted to help you out. All in the back of your head, if you're a person that really can see things, you know that this guy was doing this just to get fame, to get money. But it, it's all this stuff where it, it's not, it's not realistic in any kind of way. It's it's supermodels, uh, it's girls trying on bikini. It's it's all this shit that is making people shit. It's insane. I, I went down the rabbit hole for like two weeks here, and it's so toxic on the mind. It's it's insane. I mean, it's 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 a problem. You know, on the TV here, uh, I don't have TV or cable or anything like that in Vietnam. And I hadn't had TV or cable in America for years before I left. But, you know, uh, my mom's got direct TV here. There's a TikTok commercial on every five minutes. TikTok, a commercial for a fucking social media platform. TikTok is on the TV all the time. TikTok is not your buddy. TikTok's not your friend. TikTok isn't going to do anything good for you. Being viral on TikTok also isn't going to do anything for you. You know, uh, uh, there the way that social media is positioned right now in America, it's making it seem like everybody's beautiful. Everything's beautiful. You can be beautiful. You can get rich. Gary V here, 
undercover billionaire here. All, all this loaded bullshit that just isn't true. Okay, hold on. My camera's overheating because we're in Florida. So let me turn this sucker off and turn her back on. All right, so we're back. So here's for the update on like personal life type stuff. Um, so we did have to put down the Newfoundland um, dog today, Cody Banks. Great dog. He was uh, about 11 years old. He couldn't walk anymore. Um, he lost complete mobility. You know, he's a 150 pound dog. Um, he was shitting everywhere. You know, he had diarrhea every day. His front leg stopped working. At first it was his back legs. He couldn't even get himself up anymore. You know, he's a 150 pound dog. I'm gonna be leaving soon. It's just my mom here. You know, it'd be almost impossible for her to do any kind of emergency situation with the dog as she couldn't even probably get it into the truck. It's a 150 pound dog. Um, we went to her vet today and believe it or not, I lobbied to keep the dog alive. I was in the position of he's really happily mentally because he still was. He was he was all there mentally. It's just everything else gave out in his body. He, he had like I was giving him a bath the other day um, and he had like 55 tumors from his body from like head to toe. They were everywhere and he was chewing on his paw. He was chewing on his arm. Because he was getting frustrated because he couldn't move anymore. He couldn't go upstairs. He couldn't, you know, he couldn't be by my mom. He became a real, uh, you know, one-person dog. And it was my mom that he became attached to. And, you know, he, they go from the garage and they go upstairs. And he couldn't make it up the stairs anymore. And he was getting fucking pissed. He was getting frustrated. So, you know, there was blood all over from him chewing on himself. Uh, we were cleaning up diarrhea every day. It just became a really tough situation. And at the end of the day, I still thought, you know, if he makes you happy and if we can deal with it, let's keep him around. But, you know, the vet, the vet told her, she goes, you know, you've got cancer hardcore again. You need to take care of yourself. So, you know, it was tough. It's the first time I've seen a dog euthanized. And I have a video on it. I, I shot the video of when they put the injection through for the euthanasia and it was it would probably be a viral video it would be if, if it went out on TikTok it's it's a one minute video and it captures everything you know it captures humanity it captures dog love it captures death it captures so many emotions in such a short period of time it's it's, it's actually a really special video but I think I'm just going to keep that a private family video so you know, we're going back to Vietnam. We're going back to Vietnam on Thursday. And uh, it, it's going to take me a few days to get back there. On Thursday, we're going to go to New York. We're going to shoot New York for 24 hours. I'm going to be there for exactly 24 hours. And we're going to shoot. We're going to do walking vlogs, talking vlogs. We're going to do an exceptional amount of vlogs. And, um, you know, we're going to shoot the subway. We're going to shoot the air train. We're gonna shoot so much content in New York. Then we're gonna go from New York to Haneda, uh, the Tokyo airport, and we're gonna be 24 hours in Tokyo. So we're we're probably gonna live stream there because they have a high-speed free internet. And then we're also gonna shoot some vlogs there. So, and then after Haneda, I'll be in Saigon. I'm gonna take a day off or two when I get to Saigon to hang out with my wife, um, catch up. You know, we both miss each other, and then. Uh, I'm gonna get back on it. I'm gonna keep her moving. I am not gonna let anything stop me from making videos and being successful on YouTube. Whether I get one subscriber a month or negative 400 subscribers a month, we're gonna keep it moving, we're gonna keep making videos, and I'm gonna keep trying to help people and trying to get my thing out there. You know, The channel has always been to get successful and then give back to people around the world. Help out charities, help out organizations, help out orphans help out dog people that, that volunteer their time, do all these things. So we're gonna continue moving the whole entire future forward and not letting anything get in our path. So I appreciate you guys. You know, it's it's not been an easy run to see uh, the channel go down like 50, 60% in a month since I've been here. But I understand you guys don't wanna see uh, Florida content. You wanna see me around the world content. So it's no big deal. I appreciate you guys that have been supporting me. Stay frosty. 
See you on the next one. Peace out.